everyone, this is Joseph with JN Unique Designs and I'm back with you today um, as I was reached out from a company called Honey Bee Studios recently and asked if I would make some more floral cards for them and uh, using some uh, Distress uh, Mica stains. So I uh, created some cards and um, this is the one that I created last night, uh, not using Distress Micas, but tune in and we'll be making some uh, no shaping flowers. So let's turn the camera around and let's get started. All right, everyone. So as I mentioned to you, um, I'm going to be working with that honeybee stuff uh, dies. And I want to pull this folder out here because um, honeybee has, there's some dies here. This is a, a cart here. There is a, this is the uh, flower bouquet sleeve that I have, I will be using today. This is the peony die set. Um, as you can see, there's a layering guide that does have this. Uh, every single one of them does have a layering guide of some sort to help you layer. Uh, these are just exactly like the um, Altenew layering dies, which makes it really easy and really great um, because what happens is it, uh, it gets a little confusing sometimes when you're trying to layer your flowers. So I was going to show you, um, there's a, a lot of them. This is a, um, I can't remember what, the, this is called a cone flower. This one's called a cone flower. This one is a lily, sunflower, I believe these are tulips. These are hydrangeas. These are the roses and these are the tropical plants here. And then I have spellbinders and I have um, honeybees um, magnolia. This was just a new release and we'll get to that another day. But these were all um, given to me. So I wanted to share those with you as I promised them I would make a video. So um, let's start off with this. I, I always use Elizabeth Craft Designs release sheets, all the extra release sheets. So don't throw those away um, when I'm coloring things. I can also do it on this mat, but you know, in the sake of time and ease, I'm just gonna use a release sheet and I'm going to um, color in my leaves with that. This is uh, Versafine Claire Shady Lane is what I'm using. And uh, as I showed you in previous videos already with Elizabeth Craft Designs florals and other companies that I've used, I just like to go around the edge like that and gives it some dimension. And um, all of the florals from Honeybee are not uh, designed to be shaped. So uh, if you are a fan of non-shaping florals and just simple coloring, um, you can do it this way. Of course, I mean, you, they're, they're designed not to be, but obviously you can shape them if you so want to. Um, along with Elizabeth Craft Designs, Elizabeth Craft Designs florals are designed specifically to be shaped. However, if you choose not to shape them, it's not going to um, have any issues. And I've shown you that. I've shown you the, the way that uh, I've done it and the way that uh, um, uh, other people can uh, can do it. And uh, as you have seen and, and as you have noticed, shaping or non-shaping all makes the flowers uh, very nice, all the same. So there's no issues no absolute requirement to shape them. Uh, if you haven't seen that already, I will go ahead and link right here to the top of my uh, YouTube video here, a video of no shaping florals. It is on my YouTube channel. Um, so check it out and I'll show you how to make Elizabeth Craft Designs florals with the no shaping technique. Matter of fact, let me see if I can uh, grab a um, since you're watching this video, let me uh, see if I can reach around here and let me grab some uh, of those no shaping florals to show you what they look like. Let's see here. Um, go so these are the no uh, no shaping florals they're already in boxes because I'm getting ready for a craft fair so these are just some of the few that I've made in my time with 
um, designing with Elizabeth Craft Designs. And so you can see the florals are not shaped at all. And uh, the, if you haven't seen this video yet, I encourage you to check it out here. I'm gonna have a link to the video and uh, you can play with it then. All right, let's get back to these. So uh, I colored those flowers, or those leaves. I'm gonna set those aside for a moment. I'm gonna pull them off screen to my other mat here off to the side. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna bring in, for the sake of me not spraying my entire craft room with um, uh, mica stains, distressed mica stains, I'm gonna bring in a, a homemade splatter box this is my homemade box I, I have here so i'm going to place that in there and uh, let's start off with these sunflowers so the sunflower has three pieces so what i'll do is i'll place um, the three pieces very close to in proximity with each other as such and uh, not overlapping anything so that's the important thing is not to overlap and then i'll take my Distressed mica stains. I'm going to use Harvest Moons, Distressed Mica Stains Harvest Moons. And I'm going to use Distressed Mica Stains Flickering Candle. Flickering Candle is no longer available uh, because it was last year's Halloween release from Tim from Distressed Ranger. So what I'll do is I'll shake both of them up. But the Harvest Moon is still available. So I, uh, if you uh, check out my links down on the description box, there is a link for you to purchase these. Please use those links if you're able to, because it helps me develop my channel more for you. And uh, it, your points and everything that you do does not get affected. So if you have any points or any purchasing um, things, uh, it doesn't affect you, but it helps me because um, I get a, a portion of uh, a, little, a little kickback from the company so that I can help uh, develop my channel further for you. So after shaking up these pieces, these two um, sprays, I'm gonna start off with a flickering candle first. And I'm just gonna lightly do that, do that. Give it a little bit of shade and that's all I, it's gonna take. I'll take my Harvest Moon and I'll spray it a little bit more, give it a little bit more dark uh, color like that. And that's all I'm just gonna take for that. I'm gonna take, uh, get my tweezers here and I'm gonna take it out of the box, or actually I'm gonna move it off, uh, take it out of the box and set it off to the side here because I have some room. And then what I'll do is I will color some others just so that they're ready to go. I'm gonna take uh, some lilies. I have some lilies here. And again, I'm gonna strategically place them in my box so I'm not wasting space. And uh, so let's see. What I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna fit is, I'm gonna do three open lilies. That's what I want, three open lilies. And uh, maybe, no, yeah, three. No, I might do some closed lilies in there too. Now that I think about it, just because um, I pre-plan a lot of my creations uh, just so that I don't have to worry too much about it when it comes to crafting. Uh, it's already pre-cut. So I want all of my lilies to look the same. This is the longest part. This is the hardest part, I think, of this whole entire project. So bear with me for a moment as we lay all the pieces together and uh, get things laid out so this is truly actually it is the hardest part of the whole entire project because I'll show you how easy it is to put these together and then I'm gonna take my burning amber and jack-o-lantern uh, jack-o-lantern is last year's fall release and burning amber is this year's release so uh, the ranger and remember that like I said please use my links down below to make your purchases because and make your purchases quick because these are one and done once they're done once they are sold out they are done they're not coming back and um, Tim had mentioned that uh, 
these are great little collection pieces to have. So I'm just gonna do that, as you can see. Very simple, very easy spray. Let me get some of this. Kind of make it this, uh, like an oriental lily. That's what I want to make this as. Um, and I might take some of that uh, harvest moon just to mist over the top of it. Just give it some more color. That's what I'll do. Nice, perfect. And I'll take my tweezers here and I'm gonna put this on, I'm gonna move my box out of the way so I can place these pieces on my craft mat so you can see them. So as I take them out of the box, you can see how they have an orangey glow to them. As such. Almost there, I promise you. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll place my box out of the way here and I'm gonna take my little Ranger craft tool, craft uh, heat, craft gun here. And I'm just gonna dry a little bit of these just to get them started. So I'm gonna run my I hope everybody's doing well and uh, thank you so much for tuning into uh, my live as you can imagine it is uh, it is a process to get things ready so you know and I have um, I don't have a uh, professional setup like uh, most designers do uh, just because uh, it is expensive so I'm asking you to please use my links down below if you're able to uh, make purchases that way it supports me and my projects here so, let's see. It Should be almost there Since I didn't use too much mica sprays as you can see the colors are starting to dry very nicely And what I do like about the mica sprays is because it does give a, a glow like a um, shimmering effect to us and with the shimmering effect, um, it does look nice. So, I think all of it is about dry. If it's not a couple more seconds here, just to make sure things are good. So I am a designer for Elizabeth Craft Designs, as I mentioned to you, and uh, newly on board is um, trying to design using other company products, and I was reached out by um, honeybee and uh, so this is a video uh, dedicated with honeybee um, even though I am using most of Elizabeth craft design stuff such as paper and my uh, glue and my tapes and uh, all of that's Elizabeth craft designs and uh, just because I do speak highly and quality of Elizabeth craft designs so I'm gonna take my line co pH glue here this is just a, a fine t a needle uh, tip that I have I'm going to show you how easy these florals are made. So with the sunflower, the hardest part with the sunflower is um, lining it up and finding out which direction the florals are. But I just forgot that I needed to color the centers of these real quick. So I'm going to pull out my piece here of paper and I have some of these uh, centers I have to color because if I don't color them, then they're not ready for use. So let me do that real quick. I have a Copic marker here that I'm just gonna color these pieces. Um, this is for the lily. This is the stamen for the lily. So, let's see here. I guess I could have uh, pulled out an ink pad instead. It'd be a lot quicker than this. But that's all right. It's not about quickness. It's about having fun. And um, with with these florals, and along with Elizabeth Craft Designs florals, know that uh, you can um, use them for cards. You can use them for um, scrapbooking. You can use them for pretty much anything. They're so versatile. I use it. I am going to use this. 
It's a lot quicker, as you can see. I was gonna pull a Copic out, but I thought this would be a lot quicker. In the essence of saving time. And that was Verdant, Ver Versafine Clear, that I just used for that one. And this is a pine cone, is what I'm gonna use for this. Pine cone, um, Versafine Clear. Um, and then I'm gonna use a Distress Oxide Vintage Photo for the other part. So the center part here is gonna be Vintage Photo. So, there's that, there's that. I just don't wanna lose anything. So I set that aside, set this aside, and let's get back to it. Alrighty, so um, starting off with sunflower. So the sunflower, the hardest part that you have to think about is on the bottom piece, it always goes from the largest piece available to the smallest piece. And if you look at where the largest piece is, I don't know if you can see that on camera, I can see it on camera perfectly, is these embossed lines. So anywhere that there is not an embossed line, um, in between these embossed lines, where there's not an embossed line, that means the next layer sits right on top of it. So what you're doing is you're looking and to match up the measurements here. And I, it looks like this area here, right where my finger is, has a large concentration of areas that does not have any embossing, um, embossing lines. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna fit it right in here. See how it lines up? Perfect, and there it is, it, it lines up. Um, so now that I know that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this back. I'm gonna add some glue to the bottom here. And then again, the largest concentration of areas that does not have embossing lines is where these, this, the top, the next layer on top goes. You can do this with um, simple glue, or you can do this with foam dots. Um, if you do it with foam dots, uh, it makes the card a little bit bulkier, as you know, with the foam dots. So I am gonna use a little bit of foam dots um, just for the next layer. I'm not gonna use foam dots on all the layers just because I want it a little bit flat. I want this card still a little bit flat. I don't want it so bulky that um, it's gonna require, you know, an arm and a leg to mail these days. So as I'm looking through here, I'm seeing an area that matches, may matches. Nope, it doesn't match because this pedal is now off. So let's look for another pedal here. Let's see, maybe that does match. Maybe it's supposed to be there. No. Maybe this is it, no. This is it. That's it right there. So as the pieces match, as you can see the pieces match, then we know for a fact that we're good. So now I know that, I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna add a few foam dots to the back of this piece just because I know know that I want a little bit of dimension on the top piece. There's that. And then I'll just uh, pull some of these petals upwards just as I've done with my other videos, just to give it a little bit of dimension. And then with these pieces here, um, I do foam dot these just because I do like the way that uh, the very top piece um, sits at a three dimension with the bottom piece. And so I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna, again, just line up the pieces and do it that way. I'm gonna do this. Place this on here. See as such. And uh, there is my, there is my sunflower. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on the lilies here. Lilies, the same thing. You take the largest piece, which is the most solid piece, and then um, you put the, the second piece on. And with the lilies, I like to do foam dots on these because it gives it a little bit more dimension and it does look a little bit nicer. So I, only, I use four um, mini foam dots here. You can use any foam dots you like. You don't have to use these. I believe these are my from my old collection from Stampin' Up. Um, so. If you have Stampin' Up! ones, great. If you don't, you can use whatever you want. 3Ms, anything like that. And these line up even easier than that one. So 
place that together. I'll take this. And this last piece, I normally do not, um, I don't uh, do that. So I put this down here. Um, oh, I take that back. That goes over this piece. What am I doing? See, I was not paying attention. So you do see, I do make mistakes. I don't, uh, I'm not perfect. Like I, <laughs> like some people think I am. And uh, I just pulled the nails there and I just put some glue at the bottom of my desk, which I'll clean later. Place that there. And I'll take a stem, a stamen here. And the black stamen goes, and I just put a little bit of glue at the bottom. Place this together. Place this right inside the floral. Now you have an Asianic lily. How, how cool is that? Do the same thing with these ones. I know normally I have things already pre-prepared uh, so that in the best interest of time for everybody, I have things um, set and you know, I don't have to do too much. But with the fact that I was using the Distress Mica Stains, I didn't have time to get that ready. So, so thank you for joining me today. And uh, I'll just uh, start fast pacing this a little bit. If my fingers do work, <laughs> that's always the... The toughest challenge is my fingers don't work. Okay, take these and start lining them up. Very easy to do. Take that. Take that. Take these two last pieces here. Add some foam dots to that. I know it's uh, it is quite nice to be able to do a pre-recorded live uh, video because I'm not. I know that uh, if you have any questions, please do comment into my video, and uh, I will definitely be getting back to you. As you have seen, I will get back to you on that. But um, I'm not. I don't have the comments that I'm worried about. I guess I should do a live uh, soon. You know, I haven't done one in a while, so I should get on that live bandwagon. So, there's that. I'll do this. go. I have two Asianic lilies and then I have uh, two blooming <coughs> lilies here. So like I said, note to self is always the big piece is always going to be the bottom layer and the smaller piece is going to be the higher, the top layers. So I'll do that. And then I always only put one um, of these foam dots at the bottom because I want the top petal to flow a little bit yeah some closed lilies there so let's do this there's so many different things that you can do with distressed mica stains as you have seen already and um, David on the Elizabeth craft designs Facebook page and Elizabeth Craft Designs design team has done so much with different mediums with Distress Mica. And so there's that. All right, and I'll take, what I'll do next is I will take and bring in my um, 
card sleeve that I told you about earlier. And it already has embossing lines, so I'm just gonna take it as easy and just fold it over, as you can see. I'll fold it over as such. Add a little bit of glue into the sleeves here. And I'll hold that down. Oh, so since I did that already, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Distress Oxides here and I'm gonna color it in just because of what I did with my finger. This is the the pro, the um, the thing about, you have to be careful when you're crafting with Distress Micas is that you get ink everywhere on your fingers. And as you can tell, I forgot to wipe it. So that's why I am now having to cover it up. So there we go. How easy was that? We always have a solution. And then I'm gonna pull out my five by seven um, card backing here and I'm just gonna place this right in the middle here I kind of want the card maybe at an angle like such so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and place some glue at the back here just to keep this uh, in essence flat like I'm gonna pull it down as far as I can because what I want is I want this top area to be available for my florals designs so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place some florals in here. So I'm gonna start off with some lilies. Let's add this one first. And uh, as simple as adding glue to the back. This is not pre-planned, so in case you're wondering, this was not pre-planned. I don't know how this is gonna look, but I like some of my lilies to be at the bottom and some to be at the top. So maybe I'll put my two closed ones behind here. I'll do that. Add some of that. My closed lilies. I'm going to be Adam. Um, no, I don't like that one. I don't like where that sits. Let's do, let's do here. Let's do there. And then I'll take my sunflower. Some glue there. And that there. And then I'll add this one up top here in that corner. Do you remember how I put tape? I only put glue right in the middle of that uh, uh, sunflower so that I can um, maneuver and add leaves and all of that. And I'll take some leaves here. No shaping. Add this here. To the bottom of that. I'll add this to the bottom here. Hold that down for a second to give it some adhes adhesion. Put this together up here. And add some. It's nice to add a few leaves to the mix. Add some greenery to the mix. So I do need to cut more uh, greenery to put in here. So let me do that and then I will get back to you with the final card here as soon as. I am able to cut more greenery. So, let's see, now let's do this. More greenery. And then, yeah, might as well use it. I have it. So, I add this green here, underneath this panel here. Sometimes you just have to cut off the stem. So you can see you can see that is one card, one florals card. Just like that. Using distress mica. So there's that. Look how cool that looks. So I made um, and I'll set this aside because I can use it for another card. And then I already made pre-made some florals using distress micas also that I'm just gonna put together. So this is the peony. This is the peony here, 
and with the peony there are tons of layers on it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom layer off and take the next layer and this one I'm just gonna use glue I'm not using any foam dots on this because I want to show you what it looks like when you have something flat instead of something with foam dots so I'm gonna do that this here so there we go and with um, this uh, peony I use distress mica winterberry and that's from last year's Christmas release from Ranger so I'm sorry that it was last year's Christmas release and not this year's uh, because this year's hasn't come out yet. So if you just add glue to these, it turns out very nice, as you can see. And there's that. So, there's that flower. And then I'm going to bring in my... Uh, cone flower. I have two cone flowers here that I'll be putting together real quick. Since I already have them layered, what I'll do is I'll put them, take them upside down so that it's easier for me to do things like that. And I just want to reiterate how easy it is to line them up, as you can see. Just a uh, smallest layer at the top, biggest layer at the bottom. And so, and then you'll get what you need. There's that. So, as I, you've seen me kind of put together, I don't put glue all the way out to the petals because I want to lift them up a little bit, give them a little bit of dimension. And uh, that's why I don't do what I do. There's my cone flower. One more cone flower, and then we'll get to the assembly of these. And uh, I am very grateful that you're taking time out of your day to spend with me on this video. It means a lot to me, and uh, I, uh, as I progress through doing everything in life here and navigating through the busyness of everything, I just uh, do this so that uh, everybody can find a little bit of enjoyment in their life, too. So... There's that, we're good. Um, with uh, the leaves, what I did was I used um, this, which is Metallic by Art Alchemy. And this is just a green mousse. I don't even know what the brand is anymore. The label, as you can see, is no longer there. And I just used this, I painted it on a piece of paper and, um, and then I die cut it. So that's where the leaves are from. So let's take this and add some glue to the sleeve. Move to the sleeve. I said I wanted to do this, uh, maintain as much up top as I can. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the peony at the bottom here. But before I place the peony, I want to make sure that I have room for its leaves. So if I know the peony is going to be right about here, to somewhere around there, let's do this. Let's add some leaves to the mix first. Because I want the peony leaves to be over the top of um, the flower. So I already pre-cut off the stem of these, so that's what I like right there. Perfect. And I'll hold that down for a second, make sure it sticks. Add some glue to this. Right there. 
it's glued to this. And I did it again, so I'm gonna make sure the leaf covers that. And do this. Mix that, press that one in there. Put that cone flower there. Press it down so that it sticks for a little bit. What I'll then do is I will take some of these leaves. This is from the sunflower. Leaves from the sunflower. And I'm gonna place it, or the cone flower, not the sunflower, sorry. Cone flower, place that in there. Take another one of these. I'm gonna place it right over here. And take this one. And I might place it in here. No, let's place it up here. Like that. No, that won't do. Yes, it will go down here. So, like that. And then I got one extra leaf here from the peony. So I'll place that. There we go. So those are my two cards that we created on the live today, on this video today. And I'm gonna bring in another card here. This is for also from Honeybee that I created last night as just for a fun sample. And um, this is used uh, with only VersaFine Claire markings. So uh, there's that for you. And I hope that uh, you do like and subscribe to my channel and please use the links down below to make your purchases. Just that way it helps me out and uh, have a great day everyone. Thank you for tuning in.